Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're continuing our sixth unit on gene expression and regulation by getting into topic 6.3, which is on transcription and RNA processing. All right, so in our last video, we talked about replication. How does DNA make a copy of itself? Um, which is a very, very important process for all living things because, you know, in order to pass on your genes, you have to divide them first. You have to replicate them. You have to make a new copy, right? Uh, so that's very, very important. However, that's only a one little tiny piece of the puzzle that we call the central dogma of molecular biology. And we're going to start to get to the other two today. Um, and these can be a little complicated, so bear with me here. All right, uh, so let's get started. Genes, as we know, are little segments of DNA. They provide the instructions for making specific proteins, but DNA doesn't pr directly produce the proteins, okay? So what I've been telling you all year is that DNA holds the instructions for making proteins, but the thing is, they're in a slightly different language than what can be read by your ribosomes in order to, or a cell's ribosomes in order to make proteins. Okay, so a ribosome doesn't go into the nucleus and be like, hey, give me some proteins, give me the, give me the instructions for proteins. Like, no, there's got to be something else that happens first, and that's called transcription. And what transcription is, it's making RNA, ribonucleic acid, not deoxyribonucleic acid. We make an RNA transcript based on those instructions from DNA. So as I put down here, RNA is the intermediate between genes and the proteins. A transcript must be made for the code to be read. Okay, so a lot of times... Uh, I make a transcript for the video, and that's, uh, well, not these videos necessarily, but that's putting it in another format so that can easily be read rather than watched or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's not the best uh, metaphor for it. But So as I put here, here's the definition of transcription. It's the synthesis of DNA, excuse me, RNA using information from DNA. That's a mistake using information from DNA. RNA polymerases use a single template strand of DNA to direct inclusion of new bases in an RNA molecule. All right, so last unit, or excuse me, last lesson we were looking at making a new strand of DNA from a template strand. This time we're making an RNA strand, which if you remember is only one strand. It's not double-stranded. Uh, we're making an RNA strand based off a DNA template strand. And that RNA in particular, there's three different types of RNA. The one that's going to be made from this process of transcription is called messenger RNA, mRNA. And that's a type of RNA that carries the genetic message from DNA to the protein-making machinery, the ribosomes of the cell. Okay, so uh, we have a general overview of what this is all about here. DNA polymerase, as we looked at in 6.2, is going to make DNA out of DNA. It's going to, you know, replicate. Um, but transcription is done by RNA polymerase, and it's going to take DNA and convert it into messenger RNA. And then that messenger RNA can be translated, which is our third step here. Messenger RNA can be translated into a protein with the help of a ribosome. Okay, and if you remember from way back in the beginning of the year, what do proteins do? Pretty much everything, right? They're enzymes, structural proteins, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how we make proteins here. So translation, this is this last step, is going to be the topic of, well, 6.4 is translation. Uh, that's the synthesis of a polypeptide, a long chain of amino acids, using the information and using the code that we found uh, in the mRNA, the messenger RNA. All right, and as we know, the ribosomes are the protein factories. They're the sites of translation. This is where translation occurs. Molecular complexes that link amino acids in order to, in order into polypeptide chains. Okay, so if you remember, a protein is just a very, 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 very long chain of amino acids that just fold it all together. Okay, we're assembling proteins at the ribosome one by one by one. All right. Um, and we need the transcript in order to do that. We need the mRNA in order to do that. So that's what this topic is today is 6.3. Transcription and translation occur in all organisms, okay? All living things transcribe and translate. So unity of life, people. All right, so here's the central dogma of molecular biology. Genes program protein synthesis via genetic messages in the form of messenger RNA. Okay, so a sequence of DNA nucleotides is converted into a sequence of mRNA bases, and those mRNA bases are converted into a sequence of amino acids. They are translated. Uh, so the language is read in order to make proteins. So if you were to put it very, very simply here, this is the central dogma of molecular biology, as coined by, I believe, Watson and Crick. Uh, but yeah, replication is making DNA out of DNA, 
transcriptions, taking that DNA, turning it into RNA. RNA is taking that RNA and using it to make proteins. Okay, let's keep going here. Let's get into our uh, discussion of transcription here. mRNA is transcribed from only one DNA strand, aka the template strand. Just like we talked about in our last topic, there's a template strand that the all other strand is built off of, right? When we're talking about semi-conservative replication, okay? It's a little different this time because we're making a one-stranded mRNA instead of a one strand of DNA from it this time. RNA polymerase versus DNA polymerase. And just like that other template or the, the other copied strand that we made um, in our last topic here, um, when we're talking about replication, mRNA is complementary. RNA nucleotides are assembled with base pairing rules, okay? Except RNA, you know, it doesn't have thymine, it doesn't have T, it has U. So apple goes to the umbrella, car goes in the garage here. Okay, so U matches up with A in this case when we're talking about mRNA. Okay, so but it's still complementary, just like that the other strand that we made um, when we're talking about DNA replication. All right, so transcription, the making of an mRNA molecule using the instructions using the code from DNA um, involves three steps: initiation, elongation, and termination. And we're going to go over a brief uh, brief discussion of each one of these. So RNA polymerase, this is going to be the, our main player here when we're talking about transcription. Um, and I've mentioned it a few times already. That's the enzyme that pries the two DNA strands apart because you need to expose the, the bases on one of the template strands um, and joins the complementary RNA nucleotides and forms an RNA polynucleotide. Okay, so very similar. There's kind of an image of it up here. Very similar. Um, it kind of slides along the DNA template strand, kind of like DNA polymerase and produces an RNA strand um, complementary to the template DNA strand, just like we saw um, in our last video, except that was DNA polymerase rather than RNA polymerase. Okay, and here's actually a picture of RNA polymerase. Yeah, I know it doesn't really mean much, but you can see those alpha helices and cleavage sheets, right? It's, it's a protein, it's an enzyme, right? Uh, so the promoter, here's another term that I'm gonna ask you to know. The promoter, this is a sequence of DNA. This is a, this is a you know, sequence of nucleotides on that template strand, it's where RNA polymerase is instructed to bind and start transcription. And that's our first step, initiation. RNA has to bind to, or excuse me, RNA polymerase has to bind to the promoter, okay? Um, and in order to do that, it needs transcription factors. Transcription factors are proteins that mediate the binding of RNA polymerase and initiation of transcription. And together with RNA polymerase and these other proteins called transcription factors, they form what we call the transcription initiation complex. Okay? When you uh, get a bunch of things and you, you combine them together in biology, they're usually called a complex. So the transcription initiation complex, we've got a picture of it down here. Uh, we've got transcription factor proteins, activator proteins, um, and here's the promoter. Here's the segment of DNA where um, RNA polymerase is going to bind to. So there it is. Okay. And yeah, we're going to get into this a little bit later on when we talk about types of gene expression. Hey, but there's a whole bunch of proteins that help um, RNA po polymerase bind to the DNA strand in order to start um, transcription. Okay, so we're going to talk about this more when we get into gene expression. Elongation, as an elongation of the, M um, the new mRNA strand, occurs after the transcription initiation complex is formed and it attaches to the template. Okay, so this is this is uh, this is our first step initiation here, and then as I said before, RNA is going to kind of, or RNA polymerase. I've got to catch myself here. Is going to slide down the template strand and it's going to make a new mRNA molecule, kind of like what we saw um, in our in our video on replication. Okay, so RNA Paul moves along the template strand, pairs DNA nucleotides with RNA nucleotides from the five prime to three prime direction. Okay, same as it was before. 5 prime to 3 prime. And it continues on until it reaches what we call a terminator. All right. And that's another DNA sequence. So the promoter is where the RNA polymerase binds. And, but we, then it reaches another sequence of DNA on the template strand um, called the terminator. And that's going to signal the RNA polymerase to stop translating, or excuse me, not stop transcribing. Um, and it's going to tell the RNA polymerase to kind of just detach. And there you, there you have it. And then you should have your little piece of mRNA that you're going to be able to use for translation. But there's a few steps before that. So it's called a poly-A tail in eukaryotes. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. So as we said, RNA polymerase detaches from DNA and it releases what we call the RNA transcript. Okay. Uh, so again, initiation, elongation, termination when we talk about um, transcription. 
Okay, but there's a couple of things that we got to do before that mRNA exits the nucleus and heads over to the ribosomes to be translated. There's some other things that have to happen first. Okay, it has to be processed. So yeah, as you can see, the title of this, uh, this lesson is transcription and RNA processing. We talked about transcription. Okay, we took RNA polymerase and slid it along the uh, DNA template strand when we have a nice big piece of mRNA here, but we got to process it first and it's got to be matured. Um, so the unprocessed mRNA that we got from transcription, it's still in the nucleus, it's called the primary transcript, or also known as the pre-mRNA. And what we're going to have here is the mature mRNA, and it looks slightly different. Uh, so what, a couple things that have to happen before we send it to the ribosomes is that the 5' prime end of the mRNA, the primary transcript, re receives what we call a 5' prime cap. Okay? A 5' prime cap is a modified G uh, guanine nucleotide. Um, and the three prime end receives a poly A tail. Poly A meaning that it's got it's 50 to 250 adenine nucleotides added right to the end of that uh, primary transcript. Okay, so why why is that even necessary? That doesn't even make sense. Well, uh, the five prime cap and the poly A tail they make it easier to export the mRNA from the nucleus, and they protect that uh, primary transcript from degradation by certain enzymes, and it helps attach the mRNA to the ribosome. And that's the whole point, is to get that mRNA to the ribosome so that it can be translated to make proteins, and then proteins do all the things, right? Um, so five prime cap, poly A tail, there's two things that we gotta do to that mRNA, but the last thing is that we gotta splice it. Um, and splicing is removing large portions of that primary transcript of that RNA and reconnecting to the remaining portions. Um, your textbook says that it's like editing a video. Okay, you take out the parts of the video that you don't want to have, or maybe where you say the director says, cut! Um, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta cut that part out of the video, right? And you take the parts that you do want, and you string them all together to make a nice, nice movie. Maybe you haven't made a movie before. I don't know. That's the metaphor that they use. But it's kind of similar. You gotta take out the parts that you're not going to use, and just put the parts that you will use all together if you're editing them like a video. Okay, and that's called splicing. You're kind of splicing your, your film there. Uh, it used to actually be filmed, but uh, so we, in that process, splicing is carried out by an aptly named spliceosome. So that's a type of, uh, I believe it's an organelle um, that is able to take out the parts that we don't want and keep the parts that we do. Uh, most RNA transcripts have non-coding regions that are not translated, and those have to be taken out. Okay? Those parts are called introns. Introns are non-coding segments that are, need to be spliced out. We call them introns because they intervene in that mRNA transcript. Um, and the parts that we want to keep are the exons, and those are the coding regions that are kept. Those are the parts that are going to be slid through the ribosome, and they're going to be uh, translated into an, a sequence of amino acids or a polypeptide. And yeah, so the exon are eventually expressed into amino acid sequences. Okay, uh, so depending on what we treat as the exons and what we treat as the introns, different genes can make multiple proteins, okay? So that's called alternative RNA splicing. If we decided that this part's an intron and this part's an exon versus this part's an intron and this part's an exon, then we can get whole different proteins based on what we decide is, what the cell decides is the coding region um, for this particular strand of mRNA, okay? So our alternative RNA splicing can increase the amount of proteins that a certain gene can make. Uh, so alternative RNA splicing is when genes can give rise to multiple polypeptides, a different variety, depending on which segments are exons and introns. Okay, and that's going to be important to know when we're talking about, like, how do we get to the diversity of proteins, all right? And know when we're talking about gene expression a little bit more later in this unit. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I believe that is it. Yep, that is it for this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.